Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel. Today we're going to be installing the, DC, the SNS DCR conversion on a 2021 6.7 Power Stroke. So it's February of 2024 right now, and it is one year since the initial launch of the DCR conversion for the 6.7 Power Strokes. This has been a wildly successful product, and it's been one of our best sellers here at Thoroughbred Diesel. Now, back earlier in 2023, we did an install on an early model 6.7 Power Stroke truck. We wanted to follow that up with an installation on our later model truck. So the 20 and up trucks have a little, a couple of different components in them. Uh, upper intake manifold's different. The, the installation is just a little bit different. Kit's the same, but install's a little bit different. So we wanted to do that install for you today. Again, we've got a 2021 6.7 Power Stroke that we're gonna be installing this on. We've done the DCR unboxing video. I'm just gonna give you a quick run through stuff out here on the table that you get inside your kit. Obviously, you get your DCR pump from SNS. You get your DCR output lines, output line holders. You get these two bungs that make for different uh, references on our low side line kit. You have your pump mounting bracket. You have some ancillary parts, line holder, uh, some fasters that come. You have the uh, custom low side and return line kit that SNS came up with for uh, to match up with the DCR pump. And then you have your full color instructions that come inside the kit. The low number of components in this kit really lends itself to when you finish up this install, as you've seen in our previous installation video, the truck looks like it came out of the factory with a DCR pump on it. And that was the goal of SNS's when this came out. So I'm gonna quit yapping about this right now. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our install on our 2167 Power Stroke. When we get started, few ancillary things that we're going to do. Obviously, we're going to isolate the positive cable of the batteries to get the battery cables off. You don't have to take the batteries out. They can stay in, but go ahead and isolate your battery cable so you don't uh, don't fry anything. But uh, air intake is going to come out. This truck's got an aftermarket air intake on it, so we're not going to show you that, but it's just like any air intake. Disconnect the uh, sensors on it, remove air intake. Uh, be careful not to break anything. When we're on the passenger side of the truck, another little thing that we're going to do on setup here is we're going to, after the truck is cooled off, we're going to let the, uh, let the pressure off the degas bottle. So again, cool truck, let the pressure off the degas bottle. That's going to allow us to remove the overflow hose over there and then sit it over out of the way. So we're just working to get everything cleaned up. Center of the engine is obviously where we're headed towards and we just got to get everything uh, cleaned out of our way to get there. So we're going to start with our battery cables and then air intake and then work towards the passenger side. In the previous clip, I said we were moving towards the passenger side. I apologize, strike that one from the record. We're, we were moving towards the driver's side. So passenger side, we got uh, our stock air or our air intake out of there. But on the driver's side now, what we're going to be working towards is Isolating the battery cables, which we've already done. We're going to get the coolant hose off the degas bottle and we're going to move this little vacuum line. So I'll show you what we're doing right here. Before I do my coolant hose, I've got to unhook one end of the vacuum line. So we'll just go ahead and unhook it. The little um, plastic, black, black plastic piece in the center there uh, disengages that. You'll hear vacuum fall off of that, so don't be alarmed by it. And then you want to let the pressure off your degas bottle after your truck is cooled down. We've already done so. I'm going to move my clamp down off of the hose on the degas bottle. And right there, we'll let it have, let it move just enough off of it that it breaks free. All right, and before I disconnect it, I like to clamp it off using a pair of clamp off pliers, such as so. All right, and then we'll go ahead and disconnect the line from the bottom, like that. And then we just route it on behind the vacuum line. Try not to spill coolant there if our hose is doing its job. Or our clamp off pliers are doing their job. And then once you get right here, you'll run into a Christmas tree pin. We'll go ahead and work that out. And then just fold this coolant line over and out of your way. I usually put it right down in here, it's uh, it'll do just fine there. You can disconnect it from the, there's another Christmas tree uh, pin, push pin that's in the lower intake manifold, disconnect that and then get it out of the way. I'll What I'll do is I'll pin that back here in just a minute off camera, but that's got that out of our way where we want it. So now we're going to go ahead and remove this, the other end of the vacuum hose here and it's connected down here at the vacuum pump. Just disconnect it. 
and then simply set it out either way. All right, next we're going to do the uh, we're going to do the hot side intercooler pipe, the one that always blows off. This is an aftermarket piece we've got on this truck as well. So to remove this one, we're going to have to take the 10 metric bolt that holds the power steering reservoir out of the fan shroud here. So we just remove this bolt and then that gives us, we can just pick straight up on the power steering reservoir like that and kind of sit it out of the way. That just gives us room to, to move that pipe around. So, uh, Nothing really ground shaking here, so we'll just kind of set that over out of our way. And with this pipe, it gives us access to the uh, air temp sensors, in which we'll disconnect real quick here. All right, and then set it out of our way. I've already done the uh, clamp down at the air to water, so what we're going to do now is just remove the clip from the uh, intercooler pipe here. And to do that, you just, with this one, I already had it. Uh, I already had the ears of it at the top, so for the pipe, we just to disengage it from the upper intake manifold. We just simply pull straight back, which it will, and I'm going to unhook it from the bottom. While well, I'm trying to unhook it from the top as well. And I've got it disengaged there. Just got to be conscious of where the got to be conscious of where the power steering reservoir is. Just enough flex in that pipe to go ahead and hook it from the air to water. And then that should give us enough room to get it hooked. Sorry, that one about got me. Alright. We'll go ahead and lift our hot side pipe out. We'll take my power steering reservoir, sit it right back down. Okay, so just give you what where we're at right now. Now that we've got our hot side uh, pipe, our intercooler pipe disconnected, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start removing our upper and lower uh, intake manifolds off of this six seven. So um, that's probably the um, that's that's going to take us a little bit of time here so we're just kind of systematically start going through uh, what we're removing here uh, first thing that we're going to be removing here is we're going to be removing this egr crossover pipe there's two eight metric bolts attached at the upper intake manifold there's also two um, two bolts at the egr cooler itself and it's got a temp sensor in it the temp sensor has got a uh, small push pin holder on the lower intake manifold but we just uh, it'll just the wire will just act you can just pick the wire up out of that and then disconnect it down here the connection is down close to the uh, vacuum pump got a red uh, red locking tab on the on the sensor itself so you just disengage the locking tab and then pull the temp sensor out so you're good to go there so now we'll remove the bolts I do the two eight metrics at the EGR cooler itself first I use my universal eight socket makes it nice to get in there to it and then i'll loosen the top ones up watch what you're doing here on the trucks that have got high mileage these, these can got a lot of heat cycles on them you can break these off uh, so just watch what you're doing there so i'm going to remove those two bolts after i get them loosened up by hand and then we will do the two eight metrics at the intake manifold side itself I should have not quit ratcheting on that bolt.
They have two uh, reusable metal gaskets on either end of the uh, EGR crossover pipe here, so you just want to bring those out. They've got tabs on them to where they stay with the pipe, or they're supposed to as they come out here. Oh, I'm molded from the upper intake manifold here. Bolt length on the two. The The bolt length is the same between the top and the bottom, or between the cooler side and the intake side, so you don't have to worry about getting them messed up there. I'm gonna near cut my thumb off for the weekend cutting some firewood. So uh in the left hand. Just the thumb I need to be in there with. Not working so good. Alright, there's the last bolt and two, so we just simply Rock this back and forth, and watch your gaskets, and then pull your crossover pipe straight out. Okay, after we've got our hot side pipe removed off of our air to water intercooler, we're gonna be removing our cold side pipe. Uh, this is the pipe that connects directly to the turbocharger. Now, obviously this is an aftermarket pipe. This is an HSP pipe, and it's just got boots and clamps at either end of it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this pipe really quick, and then I'm gonna cut back in, and I'm gonna show you where the stock uh, connection is at the turbo and without this pipe in place we'll have a lot clearer uh, look at that down in there and I'm going to show you how to disengage that uh, disengage that coupler from the turbo uh, to make it a little bit easier on you for you guys that have got a stock pipe in place so we're going to remove this pipe real quick and then we'll come back and show you that coupler all right I wanted to show the turbo coupler uh, on the turbo and you can see the uh, wire clips back here. We've shown this in a couple other videos, but uh, I left this, I uh, left the boot on here so you could kind of see and gave me a little prize. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this one handed, but what you do is just get flat tip screwdriver under the uh, clip right here, and I go around until I can turn the screwdriver, and then that leg will kind of stay up. You can see how it's still high. Um, I'm gonna try to switch hands here, see if I can't do this other one. I know I'm not gonna be able to do this one-handed, but I'm gonna try. And come to the other side. And then come around. And then just turn the screwdriver till the leg kicks up. Or you can move it off, which I did right there. And then it's totally fine because you can Put that back in as soon as you get the cover off. All right. Now we can just remove the, the mouthpiece from the turbo itself. And it will be stuck, of course. You can get it there. twisted a couple times and it came right on out okay then we can bring our clip after we do that and you can just set it back on the coupler and just reattach it so then it'll be ready to go and to connect back to the turbo when we go to put it back together
Okay, now we're going to show you what it takes to remove the upper and the lower intake manifold on this 6.7 motor. So I'm going to go through and show you each one of the bolts and then just to show you what the whole uh, what the whole system is. So this is our uh, upper intake manifold on the truck right here. This is the throttle valve at the front of it here. The upper intake manifold uh, delivers air from the cold side intercooler pipe that hooks up here, of course, and then delivers air to both of the heads V8 engines. So we have service in the driver's side head over here in the passenger side head over here. <clears throat> Below this metal upper intake manifold, there is a lower intake manifold, and this is plastic. You have your air intake uh, connects here, and then it is underneath of here is the turbo, and is hooked directly to the mouth of the turbo. Okay, so to both of these manifolds, actually, when we bring in, bring them out, <clears throat> they're going to come out together, and we'll shoot this on the big camera and show you that, but you've got to get everything ready for it to be removed from the truck and we start with the uh, throttle valve electronic connection probably won't be able to do this one-handed but throttle valve electronic connection is right here in front of the uh, throttle valve here and then you just push the clip and then unhook it okay <clears throat> there are um there is one 11 metric bolt right here in the front of it and then this is the driver's side leg of the uh, upper intake manifold. I hope you can see that right there. So the first uh, here, this is our engine oil dipstick. There is a 10 metric nut on the top of it. This is the, there's two studs. There's eight bolts in the upper intake uh, manifold where it attaches the head four per side. There are two studs. The first stud on the driver's, or the stud on the driver's side, the um, the engine oil dipstick is attached to. And then you can see there is another 10 metric bolt here that is going horizontal into the intake manifold that holds the, um, that holds the oil dipstick. So we'll just remove that bolt right there. Then I wanna show you, just lift this uh, engine oil dipstick off the stud. Then you've got one stud here, uh, 12 metric. Then there are two bolts in the back of the manifold right here. And then there are two bolts in the front of the manifold right here. Same thing on this side, two bolts in the front. This one is the stud that the wiring harness is on and there are two behind that. These are all uh, 10 metric headed bolts different configurations of extensions and maybe universals to get you to the to those bolts you just got to get back there and get to them they can be gotten to no problem the uh passenger side very back bolt i leave that back bolt in the manifold and then as i'm bringing the manifold out i just guide that bolt out with it because directly above that is the um, is the back pressure sensor. So I try not to uh, remove that bolt from there and disturb that too much. I just bring that bolt out with the manifold. So then we have our intake manifold here at the top. The intake manifold has got a black shield over it, but black metal shield, two 10 metric bolts that hold it down. I just remove both of the bolts. I've already got the back one done there. It's underneath of the cowling. Bring the plate out. Then that gives you direct access to the map sensor. The map sensor has got a little uh, white tab lock on it. You just push the lock back and then push the sensor and then disengage it. So that is the map sensor. So that has got all of our bolts out of the upper intake manifold and now the lower intake manifold. Lower intake manifold has got two 11 metric bolts right here that hold it down to the engine as well. It's also got the crankcase filter uh, breather that is attached right here. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. And then if you can see right down here, and I'll grab a light. If you can see right down there, you have a seven metric uh, bolt that is the mouth of the air intake and the air intake again is attached to the turbo. So you get a long extension quarter inch drive, seven metric and loosen that bolt up to where the lower intake manifold can come loose from the turbo. I will leave the connection, so just to sh I shake it to make sure that I've got all of the bolts out. Everything should be loose at this point. And uh, we're gonna cut in and we're gonna show you what we do with the uh, crankcase ventilation filter to get it off. 
Ford tells you this is a really super low mileage truck, so it's not time to service the crankcase filter here. They will tell you to remove this, that you break three tabs off of it and then remove it. I'm gonna show you a way that you can keep this intact and just remove it and keep using it. So we're gonna set up our big camera and we're gonna cut back in and show you how to do that. But our upper intake manifold and our lower intake manifold are ready to come out and they'll come out together until I can get the upper intake manifold off of it and free of it. And then I'll we work on the uh, crankcase filter. All right, we're gonna show you how to disconnect the uh, crankcase filter here. So Ford tells you if you're doing this job, if you're working on anything in the engine valley, you've got to disconnect the crankcase filter and you do that by breaking these little plastic tabs that are around the uh, crankcase filter where it hooks up to the lower intake manifold. This truck doesn't have enough mileage on it to, to, for it to be time to change crankcase filter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little toothpick trick here to be able to get this out. So there's little plastic tabs here and I'll show you what we do, we just take a toothpick and slip them underneath of these tabs, like so. There's three tabs in total on, on the truck, or on the crankcase filter. And this one's gonna be a little bit hard to, hard to show. But you can get your, your little pick underneath of it like that. And you don't have to gouge on it too hard. You just gotta get the, toothpick in there so you see i've got those two toothpicks and what i'll do is i'll you can twist this and then just work it back and forth and it'll usually pop off so that doesn't break that bottom one okay if you want to do the bottom one when you go to pull this out you can get access to that bottom one uh, don't leave your toothpicks in there because you don't want the plastic getting memory on you and then not hooking back up but that'll hook right back up so your trucks that have got low mileage or maybe you just changed the crankcase filter and you don't want to have to pay to do that again that's a real quick and easy trick to get that off there for you. Before we start working to get our uh, upper and lower intake plenum out, you gotta remove the fuel filter. I, I've seen guys talk about being able to get that upper plenum out without removing it. I, I can't and it just makes the job cleaner and easier. So that's all we're gonna do here. We're gonna take the uh, fuel filter out of it. So, and then we're gonna take the lower cup. Uh, we're gonna take the lower cup out too. I put a rag underneath it here to make sure I catch everything. Uh, but we'll drop our fuel filter out real quick. And pretty straightforward. I'm sure everybody's changed their fuel filter before. And then uh, we've got our, DC, or our DPK line here that we will uh, unplug. There it is. All right. So we'll go ahead and take this fuel filter out and then we'll come back and show you get, taking the cup out. All right, now that we've got the fuel uh, filter out, we're gonna take the fuel cup out that holds the fuel uh, filter to it. There are four 10 metric bolts on this one. I'm gonna show you the little hidden one, but you have one here, you have one behind right there, and then you have one right here. Now, there is a fourth bolt that is underneath of the fuel line here. And when you loosen up all three of these bolts, they're the left-hand side bolt here. This bolt actually holds the fuel, the low side fuel lines down. So now you can grab this line and kind of manipulate it just a little bit. Don't pull it off the truck. You just need to manipulate it a little bit. And by doing that, you can get to the bolt that is underneath it here. Let me try to show that as best I can. Kind of see it right there. I'm touching it. Yeah, man, Adam's giving us some light. So it's right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand the GoPro to Adam. He's just going to hold it right there. And I'm going to pull the cup out. And we're fooling with the lights and everything else. I'm going to get my other three bolts out. Okay. So you've got two long bolts. So your long bolts go on the right-hand side and in the back. And then the short bolt goes on the left. And then the other short bolt. Now what I'm doing is I'm just manipulating this line so I can get the cup bolt free and pull the cup right out. Now, like I said, like I was saying uh, on the previous shot, the there, there's guys saying that they take that intake manifold out with the cup in there. I'm not one of those guys. It just makes it a whole lot easier to get this upper intake manifold assembly out with the fuel filter and cup out. It's gotta come out anyway, so why not take it out now? So we're gonna go ahead and take our upper and lower uh, intake manifolds out now. I had made mention to you when we bring this out, then we're going to disconnect the uh, CCV. Uh, I just did a video on how to use the toothpicks to disconnect that. So uh, link that in, in another portion of the video there. So I've already got the crankcase vent uh, disconnected. So we're good to go there. So we don't have to worry about bringing it out and going after that. So um, engine oil dipstick. I really like to have a helper here to hold this out of my way. I don't have that luxury today. 
and it tends to scratch that intake manifold up. So what I do is I just take a, a t-shirt or something and put it between it and the intake manifold and then that just keeps it from from scratching everything all to pieces there. So, all right, first thing I do, lower intake manifold. I'll go ahead and start moving it and get it dislodged from the mouth of the turbo. And then bringing out this upper intake manifold, a couple of different things. You're just trying to turn it from, you're trying to turn the driver's side leg towards the passenger side. And then all the time being mindful of the throttle valve, uh, the mouth of it. And then you want to really watch out for this map sensor right here. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to walk it out. Just kind of bringing both pieces together at the same time. You gotta hold your mouth just right. Get it twisted. And be mindful of this fuel sensor. So it's hitting on my top side creeper. Just keep walking it and there we are upper intake manifold is out and then we've got our lower intake manifold comes out has one piece as well all right how do i get my intake manifolds off i usually work towards the front of the truck uh, and start getting everything prepped there so what you're what you're going to have to do here is you're going to take your uh, your clutch fan off and I, I just sit it inside of the radiator shroud there and just watch my radiator and then we'll get our serpentine belt off um, and then we'll pull the uh, idler pull in then the vacuum pump off so i've already got everything loosened up here but i was going to show you uh on your clutch fan there's an electrical connector it's got a uh it's got a, a locking mechanism on top of it. you just slide the locking mechanism up and then unhook the uh, unhook the the connector and then there is a 13 metric headed uh leg going into the engine block there and you'll have to loosen it up it's right there i've already loosened it didn't loosen it enough but i loosened it and you want to do this before you remove the serpentine belt because it puts enough tension on it obviously to so you can just spin your serpentine belt off or spin your clutch fan off excuse me the clutch fan is right hand threaded so normal normal left to loosen right to tighten and this is a long bolt so you just kind of gotta manipulate everything to get it out and there you are so now we're ready to go ahead and spin the clutch fan off i use inch and seven eighths on our air gun that we've got for this um if you don't have one of these air gun jobs right here that works off of an air chisel, I definitely suggest getting one. Um, makes it really, really easy and really, really nice. Keep you from having to buy a special tool or fighting it. Spin that off real quick, hopefully. bragged on it too much. Huh. Well, I'll be damned. Bragged on that tool and it broke smooth in half. All right, once you've got your uh, your clutch fan loosened up here, we just go ahead and um, go ahead and take it off of the hub. And the nice thing about these um, about these Fords is the radiator shroud is really deep. So what you do is you just spin the fan off of the drive here and. You can set the fan, and I'm trying to keep my uh, hands out of your all's way so you can see. 
Uh, one thing too on the um, on the bracket that you unbolted, there is a push pin holding the wiring harness right here. You will have to disengage that uh, before you sit the fan down, um, just to keep from putting undue stress on the wiring harness. And I'm going to cut for just a second and get that off of there. The push pin you can see kind of from the bottom there uh it's just pushed in so i'm going to get my my pop out tool and pop that out real quick okay the christmas tree or the push pin on this uh wiring harness is an absolute bear to get out i mean it is an absolute bear just the way it's the way it's in there and it's just a wide one so you don't have that wire coming loose i got it you just got to keep working with it. the best way to do it is to bring your sensor all the way up here to the top and then you've got a little bit of a gap to get um your uh tool to pop it out of there so we got it loose you got to get it loose because um you've got to get separation from it and the fan so you can drop the fan out and plus um that that drive is going to uh be removed to get access so i just very gently set the fan down in here down in the shroud being conscious of the radiator again if you want to put a cardboard box down in there you can um, but I just sit it out of my way so I can do the work that I need to kind of lean it back and it'll give you plenty of plenty of room to do what you need to do there. All right, we're going to go ahead and remove the serpentine belt. Now we're not going to fully remove it, but we've got to get it loose from the drives here so we can take everything out. So I've got a three eighths drive ratchet, uh, real long goes on the end of the tensioner pulley. And then I sit it off of the, uh, alternator over here and then just watch the belt. So it clears the shroud and then with your fan off, you've got enough room to get your ratchet back out of there. So that takes the tension off of our belt and we can work forward with getting to the drives to make access for our, um, to get our pump nut. So we're doing all of this on the front of the motor because of working to get access to uh, the covers here so we can see the uh, the pump nut on the cp4 all right we're going to be removing the fan drive now and the fan drive is held on by it's actually held to the engine by five bolts uh, i've got them all loosened up if you can see right there on the end of my finger is one we'll go uh counterclockwise here one two but this bolt is removed because we removed it when we took the uh, wiring harness for the fan over three at the very top four directly underneath of the first alternator and five is down directly underneath of directly under the tensioner pulley and slightly to the passenger side uh, is the fifth one i've got them all loosened up there so again there's four of them that are still in play um, after you remove the bolt for the, um, after you remove the bolt for the, the, the fan clutch wiring harness, and we'll just go through now and pull out the ones that we have removed. And I left the top one in and the top of the, uh, the top idler pulley needs to come off as well. I've never removed it. Ford instructions say to take this pulley off. I've never tried to remove it without the pulley. So if you guys have, jump down in the comments there and tell us about it. And then, of course, the fifth one back here, you won't be able to see it because I'm going to cover up the camera. But... Thought I had run this bolt out more than I have. There it is. All right. And then our top one. Pull it out. All these bolts are the same length, which makes it nice. All right. Then we just simply bring our fan drive up and out being conscious of our wiring harness down there. We just simply remove that and that gives us access, as you can see here, to our vacuum pump and then directly behind that is going to be our CP4 pump nut. All right, we're gonna go ahead and remove our vacuum pump. Now, the vacuum pump has got four bolts on it and I will go again 
counterclockwise. I've got this one already loosened up, and you got one at the very top of the vacuum pump. You got one over here on the left hand side, kind of hidden by the alternator. And then at the bottom of the vacuum pump, between these two bolts, about right here, it's your fourth bolt right there. I've already removed it because it's kind of hard to get to. To get the one over here by the vacuum uh, line stem, I just turned the vacuum line to where it's out of the way. You might be able to see that there. Go ahead and remove these bolts. Another one of these nice ones where all the bolts are the same. Again, I've already removed the bottom one. All right, and here's our top. And then our vacuum pump will come right out, just like so. This gasket, if it is in good shape, this O-ring, it is reusable, and that's a Ford spec on that, so it is totally reusable there, so if it looks good to you, you can go ahead and reuse it, no problem. All right, I've kind of moved the GoPro over here to orient us on the driver's side of the engine, and what we're going to do is we're going to begin working on removing the low side uh, lines and this is the supply fuel line and the return fuel line that come from the, C, the stock CP4. Um, the, this truck has a uh, disaster prevention kit from s and So this line for the disaster prevention kit is kind of in our way of the shots and stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove this now. Obviously, you don't have to do this on your truck, but this is a good exercise in moving your... Uh, removing your uh, fuel control actuator of the pump to make sure that there's no metal on there. So if you're doing the DP or if you're doing the DCR conversion, okay, as a preventative measure, and you remove the FCA or this con the control valve from your CP4 pump, and you find metal on it, that's an all stop right there. That means that you've got CP4s already coming apart. Uh, let's just say you don't have the disaster prevention kit on here. Uh, the CP4 is already coming apart and you've got metal already in the system. So uh, we hope that that's not what's happening to you. But remember, if you remove this uh, valve and you see that, you all uh, need to stop and, and look at getting injectors and lines and everything. Um, it definitely needs to be done, but you know, to take the CP4 out, this does not have to come off. But again, I'm just removing this because I want to get the, the disaster prevention kit line out of my way uh, just to make this just a little bit easier on me. So um, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go ahead and remove the, uh, remove the FCA uh, from the pump. It's just got two Allen head bolts that hold it in, and we will remove it real quick and uh, we will remove this real quick and then we're going to remove the uh, disaster prevention line and sh then show you the, how to get the uh, low side line assembly off of the truck. Just wanted to show you what I was talking about here when you remove the fuel control actuator, what you're looking for. This truck had a disaster prevention kit on it, so there will not be any metal here uh, at the M prop. But uh, if you remove this, from your pump and you notice metal, again, it's an all stop for you. You don't want to proceed with installing the DCR. You want to stop, figure out what your failure was. You're probably looking at having to change out the lines and the injectors as well uh, because those contaminants have entered into the fuel system. So tank needs to be dropped, tank needs to be clean, change the lift pump, obviously change the filters. So this improp in this fuel control actuator is very, uh, very clean. We're ready to go here. So. I got that uh, uh, DPK line went from CP4 over here. That is our fuel feed, and I've already got it out. So we're going to go ahead and show you removing these low side lines now. All right, so I got the line assembly out of the DCR kit, and I wanted to show you uh, what these lines are and what they do. And then I'll show you in the truck here because it's going to be a little bit hard for me to film this, and I'll show you on the return side why I say that. So uh, with this line assembly, again, I was telling you, the bigger of these two lines is going to be the fuel feed. So your lift pump feed from the fuel filter to the DCR pump or the CP4 pump. And then you have the return. This is the return fuel from the DCR pump or CP4 that returns back, ties in with the return from the rail here. And then that return goes back to the tank here. This is where our DPK or our prevention kit 
uh, adds filtration, which it's not needed with the DCR conversion, but it doesn't hurt a thing to leave it in. It's just an extra layer of protection for you and keeping fuel clean. So that's cleaning the, the return fuel that's going back to the tank. So we're leaving it in place here today. But, uh, and then these two ports. The two ports from S&S work for different model years for your low, uh, low pressure fuel sensor uh, and then temp in certain years. This one only has the one sensor on it, so we'll be plugging one of these and I'll show you that on installation. But I wanted to show you what these lines were and I'll kind of direct you towards our return line here. So the return line goes back and ties in on the rail. I'm gonna unhook the GoPro and I'm gonna take you back there and show it to you, show you where it is. The uh, foam isolation panel that goes over it on these new model trucks of 20s and up, the push pins on them are, are, are rough to get to, uh, for lack of a better word, and I can make a I can make do with one of the pins out to get back there to that uh, to that return line and unhook it because it's just a normal everyday quick connect. And I'm going to show you that again. I'll take the GoPro out and I'll show you that. So this is return. This is the pressure side. You get this new line kit, this uh, engineered line kit that is engineered just for the DCR. Okay, I want to give you a close-up walkthrough of getting these um, these delivery lines to the CP4 uh, taken out. So at the top of the pump, you have an eight metric bolt that holds both the return and the supply line to the CP4. Uh, then if you come up and you're walking along the uh, the larger of the two lines, there is a sensor here that you're going to unhook, and unhooking it is you know just just like normal. You pull the lock straight up and then you push it pinch the lock and then pull straight up the sensors out there's a push pin right here holding a that sensor to the rail that uh, line assembly if you look down here and i've got it unhooked uh, there's a return line c clip that's on it uh, we talked about uh, this truck had the dpk um, uh, disaster prevention kit uh, that would have been hooked up right here we've got it unhooked and then the fuel filter for the disaster prevention kit normally this line would be hooked to this this is your two tank line for the return fuel uh, so we've got the filtration side of that hooked in I'm gonna I've already got that unhooked so that one's uh, ready to go and we'll just set that aside but what I wanted to show you was back here if you follow the line back, and I hope that everybody can see this, there is a braided line right here, and this is your return line. This goes back and connects back here on the fuel rail. And I'm gonna show you a fuel rail and how this looks. This noise pad, or this isolator pad, uh, this has got a Christmas tree push pin that is up here, and that holds this whole pad to, this holds this whole pad to this valve cover. I only remove this front pin that is pinned right here. And then what I do is I just push the pad back and give myself as much room as I possibly can to get back there to, and let me move this around here so you guys can see, to get back here to that return line. And I've already undone it uh, 5 16 it takes a 5 16 quick connect on there to unhook that. I've got it unhooked and ready to come out. So that's got everything in this line assembly unhooked and ready to come out. And we'll bring that out and I'm going to I'm going to come out. I'm going to show you on a stock rail how to unhook that stock return line. All right, so here's our stock uh, rail out of the truck and just showing you, um, you know, you have your three ports that are closest to the front of the rail. Uh, these are your two CP4 delivery ports, and then you have a crossover line that uh, delivers fuel pressure to the passenger side. But this is the standpipe for that return uh, line that I just showed you there, and I know it was hard to see it, but this is a plastic 5 16 uh, fuel line disconnect. This is what I use. You can get them at any auto parts store, but to be able to get your hand back behind that pad, not have to unhook that pad, uh, this is the one you want. So it just goes on the bottom of the, of the, uh, of the standpipe there and you just push it up into the fitting it disconnects the fitting and the fitting that comes off the rail you guys are probably familiar uh, with how that works and i'll show you inside of the um show you inside of the uh, uh the dcr kit 
this is how that goes inside the line and it disengages that and then the line pops off the stock rail so we're going to set the gopro back up in the engine and we're going to start getting uh this line pack out and get it taken out so i'll reposition the gopro and just show you this coming out we're going to go ahead and show you this line assembly coming off of the cp4 now i've already removed it from the cp4 itself and uh, before you do that there is one uh bolt holding it to the driver's side uh, the driver's side valve cover over here eight metric um eight metric bolt again uh the swivel socket really is your friend there to get uh through everything so i've got that off i've got my return line like we showed you back behind the uh foam here i've got it disconnected and i've got it out and ready to go okay so everything on the lines is good it should come out of here in one shot you just got to be really careful with it make sure you're not hooked up to anything else and you're gonna get a little bit of residual fuel we'll have to go back and clean that up but we'll just keep working it out here just like so and voila there's our stock service line set out and out of our way all right, we're gonna go ahead and begin removing the CP4 high pressure lines. Now, both banks of the CP4 have a high pressure output line. Those high pressure output lines deliver fuel to the fuel rail on the driver's side, right underneath of there, and then you have a crossover line that brings that fuel pressure and services the passenger side head. And then you can see that that has to skate right underneath of the EGR cooler that line is not in play for us to have to remove and that's the nice feature about these trucks is you don't have to go after that line over there and remove the egr to do it they're both servicing to the driver's side line driver's side rail super easy to get to so that's uh, enough of that let's go ahead and, and start getting this out first thing you have to do to get the lines out is you have to remove all of the isolators so you have a single isolator here that is on the uh that is on the bracket that's on the pump so we'll remove it you've got an isolator uh right here above the uh manifold then you've got another one right here that is above the valve cover over here so two eight metric bolts on the two that are up here on the top side of the motor and then we just remove those and it's gonna be hard for me to do uh remove those and then you remove the isolators underneath of them they will just come out in one shot when you take the top side off let me move this you gotta watch the crankcase too because that can get old and brittle and it can break on you so don't put too much undue stress on it so i want to remove that and you can see how on those isolators that the the isolator part of it is not made to the cap so you've got to watch what you're doing there if the lines are loose the isolator portion at the bottom can come out so uh, i'm just going to get my hands freed up i'm going to go through and we'll remove all those and i'll come back and i'll show you removing the lines from the driver's side fuel rail all right we're going to go ahead and remove the high pressure lines now that we've got the isolators out the high pressure lines where they connect to the cp4 head is a three quarter inch and uh, they trace over here to the driver's side uh, fuel rail. They are 17 metrics at the fuel rail. What I use to get to those is a 17 metric on a crow's foot. Get down there, it loosens them up really, really easy. But before you do that, you have to, to remove the uh, passenger side fuel line that goes under this coolant line. You have to remove the oil filler uh cap right here so there's an eight metric down here you just remove it but before you do that the battery cable that sneaks around the coolant bottle right here it's got a push pin connects it to the coolant bottle you've got to push this back to let this oil filter head uh come out here so i'm just going to remove this bolt i've already loosened the bolt up with my fingers and i've got it finger tight so i'm just going to go ahead and pull the bolt out real quick and i'm going to try to one hand turn this oil filter cap so you can see if you turn it to the uh, turn it towards the driver's side it'll go so far and then it will work out just like so just be careful of what you're doing there um, this one i try to keep when i'm doing this i try to keep this bolt with the oil filler cap 
uh, at all times so I don't lose track of it. So, and that gives you a little bit better line of sight to these two lines here, uh, which are your uh, CP4 line. So I'm gonna get the camera set up so you can see us uh, removing these and uh, getting these out of the truck. All right, this is kind of the best overhead shot I've got of what we're about to do here, which is remove these high pressure lines. So again, I said these are three quarter on the um, on the line at the head of the CP4 pump. I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen both of these up. And you wanna make a mental note of the orientation of these lines. Um, so you're your passenger side line here goes underneath of the coolant line, driver side line goes above the coolant line. So we're gonna get our line above the coolant line out first. I've already loosened it up over here at the rail. Again, 17 metric on a crow's foot, and you can get this out pretty easily. Trying to stay out of the way of the GoPro here. This line's easy. This one just lifts out, no problem. And then, of course, we talked about our uh, passenger side line here where it goes under the coolant line. You have to remove the uh, oil fill here to be able to get this out. And then once you've loosened it from the rail, you just want to kind of sneak it out underneath of the coolant line and you're going to be bringing it towards the, um, you're going to be bringing it towards the driver's side here. Just keep working it. underneath of the turbo there sorry underneath of the turbo and just keep working to snake it out of here and move it out. So I actually kind of pushed it towards the back to bring that out. Then that gets your passenger side line out and out of your way. Uh, after that, you're left with one bracket here on the back of the pump. These are eight metrics. There's three of them in the back of the pump. You don't want to remove those until you have your line out that has to come out of there. Uh, just makes it a whole lot easier um, for you not to, to to be able to get your ratchet in here to get the three bolts out of that bracket. So we're gonna reset the camera up, zoom in on that a little bit and get you a shot of that bracket coming out. This bracket on the back of the CP4 pump is next to come out. And the bolts on these are, that well, these are actually a nut that holds the CP4 to the, uh, to the gear case here. And I'll show you how that works. But anyway, they've got a metric eight um, bolt running through the middle of them. Pretty cool design on it. There's three of them that actually hold this bracket on. Turn my light over. They're just kind of in a triangle here. All right, loosened them up. Now we'll get the bracket out of the way. So, three of those. Light in the way again. Blah, 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 blah. Bring the bracket out. This bracket will not be reused, uh, but the hardware is still in place. So uh, we'll save everything there and uh, set it to the side. And then what we're going to do is we're just about at the point where we're gonna pop the, the CP4 out. So to do that, there are two hold downs uh, for this balance line here, or the crossover line, whatever you wanna call it. Go ahead and remove those bolts. That just gives us a little bit more articulation uh, of that line right there. Uh, if you really need to, uh, you can loosen it up at the rail and give yourself even more. Uh, so that's just another another piece in your book. And we're gonna cut out here at the GoPro. We're gonna show you lining up the uh, timing marks on this so you've got it in a certain position when you push it out, which just makes everything nicer 
and then we'll get the nut off the front of the CP4 and get ready to pop her out. All right, I just wanted to do a close-up shot and show you the three bolts that we're going to be removing to uh, remove the uh, CP4 pump. So I'm going to go pro action shot here and get down in the engine valley. Looking at the back of the pump here, you'll see... I'm going to point to these bolts. One, two, and then three. You can't see what I'm doing there because my hands messes it up. But those are the three bolts that you're going to be removing off the CP4 pump. They're actually not bolts. They're like a sleeve nut, for lack of a better word. And the pump is actually held on uh, by a stud right there. Uh, with those so we're going to go ahead and remove those bolts i'm going to move my gopro up here and i'm going to show the pump uh coming off out of the truck so i'm going to get the uh, gopro held on what we want to do before we remove the cp4 pump i'm going to move you over to the front of the engine okay we lost audio in this portion of the video but what did i wanted to show was there are a couple of different timing marks on the cam gear and what we're talking about here is getting ready and getting set up to pull the pump so your pump gear has got two timing marks on it they're side by side on the pump gear teeth and the cam has got two different marks on it it has got a single timing mark and then it hit single black line timing mark and then it has got a double line double black line timing mark we pull the pump with the double black mark timing marks on the pump gear lined up with the single black line you see it coming in frame here single black line on the cam gear lined up and this is where we leave everything and then we begin to pull the pump and the audio will start coming back in here in a second and i talk about that but that's what i was talking about here where we lost the audio is the two different marks that are on the cam and where you need to be lined up all right we're just going to go through everything we need to do to uh pull cp4 here real quick so uh 27 metric uh and i you know you don't really need to block anything on the engine i'll just put a half inch drive ratchet on it and wrap it with my hand and that will usually uh, break it loose without losing position so you just got to make sure that you watch your um make sure that you watch your your timing marks there because you want to keep everything lined up because once you pull a cp4 pump you can't go back in there and uh, uh, change the engine position get it lined up correctly without it so we're gonna go ahead and pull the nut off the front of it make sure you don't drop it we go ahead and pull that off and then we go for our uh, two our three bolts on the back of this I'm gonna reposition the camera so hold on for you seasick folks there we are Let's see if it'll hold for me again three 13 metric nuts on the back of that you've got enough room to get a ratchet in here as you can see i've already got them loosened up i'm going to show you these are pretty slick i mean even as a sleeve nut however you want to call it it's recessed here for the bolts for the uh, line bracket on the back of it so i'm going to get all three of those off we'll set those aside we will be reusing them so don't chunk them over the heel and then we're going to get our hammer and what i like to do especially on these new trucks like this i'll at least grab the cp4 pump and shake it and see if i can work it loose sometimes i can sometimes i can't watch your wire and harness here i'll get it working like that that one act like it's gonna come off but i'm not gonna all right so what i do is I'll come back and I'll uh, reset. I thought I brought brought my set with me here. So hold on just a second. I'll cut back in. I'll show you what I do to uh, dislodge the CP4. To get my CP4 dislodged, what I like to do is I just like to use a ball peen hammer like so. And I just place the rounded portion of the ball peen hammer right on the end of the pump. And then I'll wrap it a couple of times, just like so. And it doesn't take much. And that usually has got the pump completely dislodged there so uh, i kind of go back to working the pump with my hand <clears throat> needs a little bit more persuasion Go 
back to working the pump. shots and uh, all right we got everything clear there couple more little taps All right just about got it loose here back there. And of course, because we're on camera, it's not wanting to give up the ghost. So we will give it a couple more shots. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a pry bar so I can get on the back of the CP4 pump and put a little bit of pressure against it. So let me shut the camera off real quick. I know I've kind of got out of position here, and then we'll come back and then we'll we'll uh, put a pry bar against it and get it coming out. I literally quit too soon because I got off camera and I gave it one more good wrap with the hammer and it completely it dislodged there. Uh, and before I did that, I'll show you what I did. I went back in, used my um, CP4 nut and just put it on the, uh, I ran it in uh, three or four really good threads there for, for good engagement. And then that gave me just, that let me center the uh, ball peen hammer uh, better. And then I gave it another wrap and it, it popped right out. So I'm gonna show you the, CP4 pump coming out, so don't forget you've got your balance line on the back here. We've got it unhooked from the fuel rail, uh, but we just don't want to tweak on it too much because we can damage it um, on the uh, passenger side line where it connects. So we just push this directly back, like so, and you just keep working with it till the CP4 pump clears the studs. And then I'll hold back on the lines like this and then just kind of turn the pump and rotate it out like so. So we've got our CP4 removed from our uh, from our 6.7 power stroke here. What we're going to do is we're going to begin the timing process of the DCR pump uh, to the truck. So you can see that we've got both the DCR and the CP4 here on the table. And you'll remember when we pulled the CP4 out of the truck, uh, we pulled it with the timing marks correct on the motor. Uh, and then that, when you remove the CP4, you'll notice that there's a timing dial on the drive shaft of the pump, and it is at the 12 o'clock position, it's pointed straight up. So when we reinstall the DCR, we are going to be timing it, and we're timing it for uh, we're basically timing it for, uh, for quietness of the operation of the pump. And um, there is a drilled marker on the drive shaft of the DCR pump. And what we'll do with the pump is we'll turn it over to where the pump uh, pressure regulator is pointing down here. It'll be on your right hand side if you're facing the back of the pump. But you'll know the pump is in the correct position if the electrical portion of the pump is up at the 12 o'clock and i'll just turn the pump around here so show you so we've got the fca of the pump is is straight up at the 12 o'clock position and then that will leave on our drive shaft the drill 
the drilled mark on the drive shaft of the DCR, we'll just turn that that little drill punch, that little drill mark down to uh, down to the six o'clock position. So it's going to be straight down from the electrical portion of the DCR pump. That's a, the best way I really know to explain it. And you know, here's the nice thing when you've got the two pumps on the bench side by side and you're looking at them, you grab this DCR pump and you can spin it. It spins freely. Actually, we talked about this in our earlier video. When you get around to the, kind of that six o'clock position of where the drive shaft's going to be, um, you'll, you'll feel a stroke of one of the plungers in the pump uh, is, is right there. If you go and grab the shaft of the of the CP4 and try to turn it, you you damn near can't turn it by hand. I mean, it's so there is a lot of rotational resistance inside the CP4 pump. So, speaking in parasitic terms, the DCR pump is going to be a lot easier on your engine. It is going to uh, be able to turn it easier, so a lot less parasitic loss. In my, in my opinion, with the DCR pump. Uh, you can just grab those two pumps and turn them and see what you're talking about there. So the timing component of this is what a lot of people, it trips them up. But this is a surefire way uh, to let you see where the pump is going to be when you got it out here on the bench. And then when you turn it up to where it's going to be mounted the way that it's mounted, the drill, uh, the drill point of, of this is actually going to be uh, right at about the seven o'clock position on a clock. So when you're when it's set in the gear set right here, that that drill point will be down to the seven o'clock position. So once you get everything in and you get your nut tightened on it, uh, and you want to check to make sure that it hasn't slipped time, that seven o'clock position is where it's going to be. But laying on the bench with everything like this, it'll be sit down at the six o'clock position. So. We will grab our mounting plate. This mounting plate, uh, SNS came up with this. You've got countersunk holes here that is going to use the two threaded portions of the block, and bolts are included in that. And then we'll add two studs that SNS uh, that SNS includes as well. And those three studs, the stock uh, stud that is in the engine block in the front flange, we're going to reuse it. But then we've got the two studs that we're going to add here uh, that SNS sends with the kit. And we'll show you that inside the motor. Um, so we'll have to take our flange in with us to get installed. So we're going to get back set up on the GoPro and show you these shots as we're working on them. But this is a timing procedure for the DCR pump. All right, we're down here at the pump gear and we're going to show removing the pump gear here. So I'm going to push the gear back. I'm going to kind of show you um, with the pump gear all the way back. You can see where this is kind of a helical gear. I'm gonna move my hand there. And it doesn't look, you know, it doesn't look like your timing marks are, are lined up. I'm gonna pull the gear out just a little bit so you can see better there. Kind of gotta get the gear to stand up, which is a chore in itself. And you can see those two marks on the pump gear and the single mark on the cam gear lined up there. So again, this is a helical gear. So we're going to go ahead and remove the gear uh, and just pull straight out on it and get it out of the bore there. Just, we've got everything lined up. So we just know how that gear goes back. And this gives us access to two bolts and you can see these two bolts in here. Okay. You can skimp by the cover and get your socket on those. And those two bolts have to be removed. And I'm gonna show you those up top here, where they are. Okay, it's this, this bolt right here and this bolt right here. So you can get a socket in there in the uh, engine cover and you can just barely get those bolts past the timing cover and get them out. So we've got to get those two bolts removed. And then once we do that, we're going to clean up this surface here. Uh, where our mounting plate for our DCR is going to go. That surface has to get clean. I'm going to kind of get the GoPro back there. This surface has to be cleaned really, really good because we need ultimate, we need complete flatness there. And then we don't want uh, anything problem. We don't want any problems there affecting our torque specs because our torque is very important here. So again, we're going back in. I'm going to try to bring the light real quick. Just kind of get down and dirty there. We're going to bring that light back. So we're going to get back in the cover here. All right, you can see there's three bolts, but the two side bolts, those are two we're gonna, we're gonna be concentrating on. Move that just a little bit more. Now, 
now that's a that's a pretty good look at those two bolts again get in there with a, a three or with a quarter inch drive socket and uh, loosen the loosen the bolts back and they'll just barely will come by that time in case you may have to may have to tweak them just a little bit not tweak them but just put a little bit of pressure towards the inboard side there and the bolts will come right out so we're going to go ahead and remove those now and i'll set the gopro up and try to show you that as i work on it and just kind of show you so again we're working on these two bolts right here and i don't have the best shot to show you here but uh, i showed you inside the cover that those bolts are very close to the uh, outside uh, edge of the of your timing cover here for your your uh, for your pump access so i use a 15 metric shallow and a, a three or four inch um, extension i just get on the bolt and you won't be able to engage it 100 percent lined up with a with a, a 3 8 drive but 3 8 drive will work if you want to get down to quarter like i was saying if you've got a 15 metric shallow well socket that's the best thing and then you just loosen it up they are tight so uh, and take your time watch your sockets uh, don't drop anything down in the don't drop anything down in the uh, uh, timing cover. So you can watch this bolt. I'm gonna show you right here. And these bolts, and I'll show you when they come out, they're, they are threaded for the cover and then they're threaded to accept the pump nut. So there's two different sizes of threads on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see, and you'll see it kind of work back behind the coolant crossover uh, as I unthread it. And then I'm just gonna talk through this. So hopefully you're watching at home and you're doing the job here that this portion of the video, you're gonna see and feel what I'm, what I'm showing you here but um once you get the bolt uh once you get the bolt unthreaded from the cover when you pull it back when you pull it back you'll hit the timing cover and then you really can't work it anymore okay you can't work it past the cover what i do then is just continue to unthread it and if you can see that and it probably might not be getting it on the camera i'm gonna push forward here so maybe you can see just a little bit of it if you just keep unthreading it you can see it'll work inside of the cover, just like so, and you can remove it. I'm gonna show you this bolt when you get out. You just really gotta watch what you're doing with this bolt because this bolt's got a, it's got a washer on it, and the washer won't come past the threads. But you never know if your luck's like mine. You drop it in the trans, in the case, and voila, there you are. So these bolts uh, are not used back, but I'm gonna leave that there just for reference. If anybody needs to stop the frame and look at it, they can. So I'll use the. I'll do the next bolt as the same. And I'll scoot it past here. So again, we're just gonna unthread it from the cover. All right, and then once we get it unthreaded from the cover, we're gonna pull it straight back until it touches the cover, okay? And then we're gonna kinda angle it inboard there and we're gonna keep unscrewing it. And by doing that, it'll just sneak past the um it was going to sneak past the timing cover just keep your fingers on it don't drop it don't do nothing crazy you don't want to force it into anything it should thread without engaging the cover or tearing the threads up in the cover or anything like that it should come right out just like so so again turn it towards the inboard side like that and just keep threading it and your bolts will come right out so this is going to be our stopping point in the video. We are completely done with uninstalling all the components here. It's now time to install our SNS DCR kit. So the first thing that we're gonna do before we put our DCR uh, pump on the truck is we've got to set our pump gear back in here. So remember, and then you can see in the shot, there is the single timing mark right here on the cam. And I know that the light level is low on that. And this is a helical gear. So when you go to engage the, um, engage the pump gear, you might have to try it a couple of times because of it being a helical gear. So we'll look at that and see where that is. Does that have my two? No, nope, I'm off with two or three teeth there. So, Got me. And I gotta set the gear again. I'll just roll the gear back over. And looks like I got it right there. So two, or I'm sorry, I don't have it there. I'll pull the gear out, and then that gives you a little bit better view of if it's made it up or not. All right. 
as you can see we're still off a couple teeth so we're going to go back to the right here a tooth or two all right let's see where that's got us we're still going to be off by one or so so we're going to go right here and right a tooth So let me pull that up and get that even with the other gear there. You can see our two lines are meshed up with our single line on the cam gear. So that is correct engagement of the timing marks right there. So there are two are on the single, uh, the single line of the gear. I will check that with an inspection mirror just to make sure but that's got us good there. So we've got our, our pump gear in now. So we'll take you back up top and we'll show you getting prepared to put the DCR in the engine valley. So we're in the engine valley now. We're looking at the surface where our, uh, our DCR pump mounting plate is gonna go. And we've got this surface cleaned up as best we can. Uh, I use a scotch or bike pad and some solvent just to get everything cleaned down. And one thing I want to make mention of is the two mounting holes that are in the block. Uh, these are the through bolts that we took out through the front cover. Uh, these are metric 10 by 1.5 bolts. I definitely suggest for you to have a uh, re-threader on hand for these because I think where the bolts go through the front cover, I, I just like to get these threads good and clean. In the trucks that I've done, it seems like they've all needed to have a re-threader run through them uh, just before I'm confident in it. And again, the the torque, um, this surface has to be really clean. The torque has to be correct on these plates because we are dealing with a geared, uh, the, the front gear training, we're gonna be mounting a pump here, uh, obviously that uh, uh, needs to be straight on uh, as it meshes with the gears. So. We've got our s and mounting plate that we're going to go ahead and drop in here. And we've cleaned that surface up uh, as well. And we're going to put the two uh, T45 chamfered bolts in here first. Now, s, &S includes a uh, little thing of Loctite with their kit. And you've got your chamfered T45 bolts we're going to use here. Just making sure you guys see that. And we'll put a little bit of Loctite on the first one here and then this well, I'm getting that started um, you'll notice that we are using the existing stud at the bottom of the engine valley here uh, so now we use our other T45 bolt here We'll go ahead and start it. Okay. All right, you guys don't want to sit here and listen to this ring, so I'm going to run these down and then I'm going to uh, torque these to 25 foot pounds. And you want to make sure that you bring the uh, mounting plate down evenly. Again, we're going to be working with a um, we're going to be mounting to a uh, to a gear train uh, a gear train product here, or a, a, a gear train unit. So uh, we want to make sure that we get these uh, torqued down correct or brought down correctly. So again, the torque on this is 25 foot pounds. And now I just now got the light to where you, you guys can actually see what we're working on there. So you see our s, &S mounting plate. And we'll come back and we'll show you the studs here. So I'm gonna to torque these down and then we'll come back and show you the studs. Okay, now that we've got those two bolts 
tighten down. I need to reposition my GoPro here. Next, we're going to be working on the two studs that SNS includes in the kit. And you can see with the studs, there is a short thread side. See that? Then there is a longer threaded side. The short thread side is what you will be putting the uh, Loctite on. And then you are just going to install those into the top holes here. And we will be running those finger tight to the end of the shoulder. And I just work it, work it back and forth like that to make sure that I got it to the correct depth. I will loosen those and tighten those a couple times just to make sure that I've got them to depth, but you just want those finger tight. Okay, there you go. I'll reposition my GoPro so you can see what that looks like again. So there's our two studs. And then, of course, our bottom stud here is our factory stud. So this is kind of the, um, this is a very ingenious, you know, uh, use of the, uh, what you have with this motor for mounting this DCR pump, which is just another testament to the engineering of the whole kit. And I know it's a very close up shot, but I think that it gives you guys a good view of what you're looking for here. So, all right, we're ready to mount a DCR pump now. So. When I start my DCR pump, you want to you want to start it with the nose kind of down, and just kind of keep walking it through everything here, walking around the um, walking around the coolant lines. And when I get everything down, then I'll usually just bring the balance line I want to try to get the snout of the pump in the mm, engaged as quick as I can and it, again we'll just keep working with the Working with the balance line. We want to, as we're going down with it, we're just going to take it over the back of the pump, the lines. We're going to go the other way. You engage it and push it forward. So try not to tweak on your balance line or your crossover line too much. You wanna make sure that you lubricate the O-ring and we can just push it forward with our hands and it'll engage the front cover. Don't pull it up with the nuts. I wanted to show, that's a good shot of it. I wanted to show the timing mark so you can see that my pump drive gear has got the two dots and then you can see the single dot down there on the cam gear. That is, shows both of those uh, meshed up correctly and then if you look at the end of the DCR pump you can see our uh, the drill indention that is kind of centered down at the seven o'clock position as we're looking at the front of it this is everything that is timed up correctly we can go ahead and push the gear back and then we can put our pump nut on and uh, and begin 
and, and complete the rest of our assembly here. All right, we're gonna put our uh, pump nut on now. This is the nut that goes on the front of the DCR pump. This is the stock nut that uh, from your CP4. So we're gonna uh, carefully, remember we're working in that front cover there. We wanna be real careful. We wanna double check our alignment marks on our pump gear. So we'll put that in and then we're gonna torque that to 60 foot pounds. And then we will come back and we will torque our, uh, I'm sorry, we didn't have the light here for you guys excuse my cinematic shortcomings there then we will come back here and we will tighten up our mounting um, mounting mounting nuts here and before we tighten up the pump we'll again and this needs to be the dcr pump needs to be seated flush against the cover and then we'll hand tighten all of our bolts down here but you don't want to use these nuts to pull the dcr to the cover you should be able to engage that front that engine cover uh, by pushing the dcr pump so now we're going to work on the the nut for the dcr on the front and again we're going to torque this to 60 foot pounds i told you to go ahead and put your oil uh, fill the oil fill on the uh, driver side valve cover in uh, scratch that instruction next we're going to be installing the bracket that SNS sends us with the kit and it goes right um, below the crossover line like so and then you use your stock bolts back from uh, from your CP4 install so we'll go ahead and get the two of those bolts in and get them tightened down so what we're going to be doing here and throughout the rest of this is we're going to be getting all of our isolators and everything um, on and in position and the reason why we're doing this is just to give ourselves um, well just to get one more step done and getting everything ready so we'll be able to pull the crossover line out here where we need to uh, and to tighten this down so that's what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and tighten this bracket to the back of the pump and uh, one thing that i forgot to make mention of is your electrical connector for the uh, dcr pump you want to make sure that that is free and not pinched or anything like that before you go too much farther with your install here so we're going to go ahead and um, put that bracket on and tighten it down here on the back of the dcr pump All right, we're going to install our high pressure lines from the DCR now. This the the line with the most transitions in it. This is your passenger side line. I do it first because it has to go on that. Uh, it goes underneath of this coolant line here. Uh, before you install this, make sure you blow it out and get all the contamination out of it if there's any in it. This, they are shipped with covers on it, but I like to be a little bit extra careful. So uh, when I started, I actually started. I start my uh, driver's side uh, end of, or I start the line that's that's closest to the, the end of it's closest to the rail. Golly, couldn't get that out. I actually go ahead and place that underneath of the 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 uh, CCV hose and just get it get that portion of it out of my way. It just seems to flow better like that for me. And then I turn the line back over like it'll be fitting on the DCR. When I do that, I will go ahead and push the end of it with the end of, with the with the fuel line nut end of it underneath of this high transition at the at the uh, coolant line back here, just like that. And then I push it on through just a little bit. And then when it turns that last time, you'll see. It meets up just about exactly where it goes on the DCR pump, so uh, all of that looks good. And then uh, that takes me just about over exactly where I'm supposed to be on the middle, uh, on the middle, on the middle orifice of the rail here. So I'll uh, I'll go ahead and I'll just loosely attach it to the DCR, and then I will loosely attach it to the rail over here i'm going to disconnect the gopro and show you the routing of that i hope i've got enough light here okay you can see the line on the passenger side of the dcr pump 
you can see it underneath of the coolant line here underneath of the return line right here underneath of the ccv hose right here and then you can see it attached right there i hope you can see that to the rail okay so there it is attached to the rail right there and then we will uh i have my uh crossover line i don't have it uh tightened down yet either this is the on the rail orifice that is closest to the front of the engine i don't know if you can see that or not that is on the rail orifice that's closest to the engine i'll sh i'll show it right there uh we can go ahead and and attach it to the rail as well because we're putting these on with crow's foot so they're easy to get to there so that is the routing of the passenger side line again i like to start with this line because it is the line that goes underneath of our coolant line so now i want to set the gopro back up and we're going to put our driver's side line on we're going to go ahead and install our driver's side line our driver's side line uh, has the uh, tall rise here that goes over the coolant line and you will still need to work it underneath of the uh, crankcase vent here as well but it is pretty straightforward, almost a straight shot down to the DCR. We'll attach it right there. And then you can kind of see on your lines how they'll line up here uh, for, its, for their connections at the isolators. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach this. Go ahead and snug this down at the rail. And these lines are exact fit, it's crazy. I mean, it really is, it is, it is insane. They, they got these transitions down perfect on these lines i'm just kind of snugging everything down here um sns did a really really good job with the with the uh, cad cam on this making everything fit like oe and look like oe so uh and you can see the way those lines are going to lay out you're going to have your isolator is going to go back exactly in their positions and uh should be able to get everything back there so this is what we're going to do we're going to go through i'm not going to fully snug these lines down i'm going to just just tighten them just a little bit and i'm going to come back in and show you the isolator placement on everything just make sure you don't have anything caught underneath of the lines that isn't supposed to be there make sure you get your back your crossover line tightened back down but yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go come back and we've just got these snug down. I'm gonna put my isolators in uh, before I start any of my tightening sequences. All right, we're gonna start on our isolators now. Uh, I'm gonna do the two line isolator that's right directly at the back of the pump there where the SNS bracket attaches to the pump. Um, what we're gonna do there is you have to get your two isolators out, the metal plate and then the long bolt that's got the on this truck's got a purple mark on it i don't know if they're all like that but this one is so uh, i'm gonna put the other isolator up and the uh, bolt and what i do is i just i start with the crossover line because the crossover line in this position here has got the most tension on it and i'll raise up just a little bit on it of course i don't have it tightened down I raise up just a little bit on that and slide it into position. I don't know if you can see that, but just put it on top of the hole right there. And then, of course, our passenger side line is not tight yet. And then I bring in our top isolator and our cap and put it on the lines like so. bolt in here like so so um, I leave that loose and that's the uh, long bolt of the purple 8 metric so we just leave that loose and because we want to when we tighten that down we want to leave the lines loose again and we want to make sure that they fit in the portion of the saddles and then the other two I've already done one, this one closest to the rail. I've already got it done, but I'll show you uh, doing this middle one because I feel like you have the best shot of that. So I put my isolator on the bottom, 
just like so and then so I don't have to fool with too much I start one bolt on the isolator because that keeps everything in place where I need it to be and then I'll come back and swing everything around and start my second bolt all right and I will go ahead and uh, eight metric I'll run these down just a little bit but again the concentrate on keeping all the lines in the saddles and they do I mean you don't have to tweak on anything it's it this is a well-made kit and well designed well thought out uh, you know this this type of stuff in the aftermarket we don't not necessarily see all the time but um, this type of attention to detail is something that um, sometimes in aftermarket products you don't get uh, it's it really is and I I say it again, I've said it a couple times in the video here, this kit, and you'll see once we get done here, has an OE fit and finish, and it uh, it's it's pretty cool. So, and you can see on that isolator from the top side of the camera uh, that the lines are coming around there, and again, they don't, I don't have to, I'm not having to tweak on anything, they sit in the saddle well, so. I'll tighten these isolators down here real quick and then we'll come back and put our uh, finishing tightening on our lines. All right, we're going to set up our uh, s, s fuel lines, but for our 20 truck, uh, for the 20 plus trucks, there's going to be a little bit different configuration than you're going to have with the 15 to 16 and the 11 to 14. So we have a video that we have done with 11 to 14 and we show you that. The instructions really uh, show it really nicely. But anyway, long story short, we need to get the, the pieces off of this line that we're going to roll over to the new s, s This is the return is a smaller, and then the low pressure feed or lift pump feed is the bigger of the two lines. So first thing we're going to do is uh, this fuel sensor right here. We're going to remove this. This is a 24 metric. Um, it's not super, super tight, so we can remove that. And it actually goes in the port. Actually, I'm going to get done with this, and then I'll show you. So we're going to remove our remove our fuel sensor and then this plastic clip <clears throat> the metal portion of this has to be reused onto the SNS line and SNS sends you a new plastic piece here in case you need it if you tear this one up and get it open but this is easy to get open I mean if they get brittle they'll break on you but um, if you take a small flat bladed screwdriver and then just push the, the uh, catches closed and then prize with a screwdriver it'll usually come up but again it could be brittle or whatnot don't sweat it if you can't get it you get one in the kit so just go ahead and pop it off so we'll go ahead and move that over and we'll take that so that's all we need off of our stock lines oh you'll need your bolt out of there as well excuse me all right so that's all you need off your stock lines so and this configuration is going to be for the 20 and up only trucks i'm going to turn that to where you can see it a little bit better so again this is our lift pump supply line the orifice that's closest to your flexible line you get a allen headed plug in your kit this is three sixteenths you want to put that plug in your front port because that is not going to be used with the tw the 2020 trucks so this is an o-ring fit so we'll just tighten that down and snug it And then our rear port is going to be for our fuel sensor that's going to go back in here. And we're going to install that and tighten that up as well. Another O-ring sensor. And then I'm going to use a wrench here. Everybody's going to cringe on me. Tighten that up. And then your clip will go directly behind that. And I'm going to install that when I get in the truck so I can leave this the lines to have some articulation here. Uh, and we'll be in pretty good shape. So before you get in the truck, don't forget to put your bolt in. Uh, and now we're ready to install this in the truck. I'll leave the, the, uh, the little caps on these while I'm working inside the truck so I don't get any contaminants in it. Um, you know, right before you hook everything up, you want to blow those out again. Make sure that you didn't get packing in it or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and now we'll roll back over on the GoPro and show you installing this in the truck. 
All right, it's time to install our service lines from SNS for our DCR pump. The service lines before I install them, I like to try to blow them out both on the lift pump pressure side, which is the bigger of the two, and then the return side, which is the smaller one. Uh, I like to blow these out, make sure that there's no pump contaminants or any kind of contaminants from manufacturing in the lines that could be introduced into the DCR. This is the end that hooks into the DCR. It's got the plastic caps on. I leave these until I get the line in place so that I know that my O-ring doesn't get caught. And when I start putting them in the truck, I wanna make sure that my lift pump supply line is what I'm gonna call south of this return stand here. The return line hooks onto the brass uh, or gold anodized, whatever, uh, standpipe that's down on the driver's side uh, rail. There is a wiring harness that runs uh, close to that too. I just want to make sure that that wiring harness is down below the uh, fuel line. So when I go to orient this in the truck, I, I want to take my uh, return side and get it behind the CCV line. And uh, then I want to make sure that the CCV line is of course uh, up top and out of the way here. And then I will just keep working my return line back and I'll pull the uh, plastic cover off of the return line. I don't hook the return line up and trust me when I tell you this, you don't want to hook the return line up. Some guys do that uh, and it, it just, it, when you get it hooked up, you can't get the lines hooked into the DCR. So I'm working with my low side uh, fuel line here that is at the pump. So everything is landing on this rail pack where it's supposed to. So we're in good shape there. That's going where that's supposed to. So what I'll do now is uh, I will go ahead and I will remove the red plugs from the DCR pump and I will remove our two uh, caps here on the ends that go into the DCR. I have lubricated these with clean motor oil so they are ready to go. So I'll do one final check of everything. And when you are installing these lines into the DCR, you wanna make sure that you get them straight up and down. And when you push them, you get them seated in the DCR pump correctly. You don't want to, you want, you should be able to do this by hand and get them completely seated in the pump. You don't want to have, you want them to go at the same time, you don't want one line to go and not the other one. You want these to get seated both at the same time. That ensures that the that the O-rings don't get creeled or cut or torn. I'm sorry for the old southern terminology there. And then our supply line will, of course, come back to our return filter right here or our fuel filter right there. We've got our fuel line out here. So we're in good shape there. So all of our orientation is good. All right, and we will install our bolts and I don't have it with me, so I'll get back now, but we've got, this is our bolt uh, this from that comes from, that came from the stock CP4. We'll put just a little drop of, um, of uh, Loctite on this. We'll use that Loctite blue that came with the uh, kit and then we'll put that in the DCR pump and then I'm going to clip on the uh, return line here at our uh, driver's side fuel rail. So I'm going to cut back in and show you clipping on that fuel line return rail as best I can or at least let you hear the click click of that and what you're looking for there. We've got our SNS service lines in there. Sorry, I had the GoPro battery was dying there on us. Um, but I've got my bolt in the DCR pump. I've got it a little bit of blue Loctite on that when it comes to the kit. We're going to go ahead and torque this down to 89 inch pounds. Do not over tighten this because it is into aluminum and you will strip some stuff out. Okay. All right, and you wanna make sure that you get that seated in the DCR pump as best you can, or all the way down, because you don't wanna draw that down with the bolt um, and risk cutting your O-ring. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my DCR pump connection uh, from factory here. 
you have a bolt over on the valve cover that we will tighten that down to 89 inch pounds as well let's go ahead and knock it out here i was gonna I'll take the gopro down and show it to you on the and then the last thing that you're going to be doing is you're going to be going back here and you're going to be getting the return line and hooking it onto the rail i've got it positioned everything ready to go put it down that brass tower push it till it clicks like so and i'm going to bring the gopro down here i'm going to show you where that bolt was i was talking about right there in the valve cover we tighten that down to 89 inch pounds and that's got our service line set done right here the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to install my oil filler and go ahead and get that portion of it done and i'm going to push my isolator back down and then my isolator has got its little push tab that goes right here into the valve cover to the front part of the valve cover i'm going to go ahead and get that done and get all of that out of my way um and uh, uh just clean up that side of the engine i don't really need to show you that doing that on the install that's that's what we're going to do we're going to put that isolator in and we're going to put our our oil fill uh on the driver's side valve cover in all right i'm going to make mention of this uh you know this truck had its uh dpk kit on there we leave the dpk filtration element in in the truck it doesn't really do anything but it just adds another point of filtration at that return side um so we're going to go ahead and hook hook that up to the s and s line here on the return side so we just uncap that and then we hook our return line coming out of the filter to that now if we did not have the dpk we would be hooking the uh what is our factory to the tank return line would be going right there but that's not the case on this truck we left the dpk filtration in play here and all the things so that's got this side done i've got my noise isolator back on i've got my oil fill on tightened down we're in good shape on our driver's side here we brought you down here to the engine valley for up close and personal shot we're going to go ahead and install our vacuum pump now our vacuum pump is held on by four bolts and they're kind of the uh as far as the bolts go they're kind of the galvanized looking bolts when you go to look looking for them eight metric head on them uh, there's four of those so your attachment your points are here 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 and there's one up top right here that we're going to be going to so i've uh check the tightness on my pump bolt just one more time for safety's sake uh, and i've got that uh, i that turned that just a little bit so i had to uh reorient my vacuum pump so it'll engage it correctly hope you can see that so we're going to go ahead and install the pump now uh, again if it doesn't want to go you probably don't have it lined up correctly uh to the pump gear so just kind of move it back and forth and you really want to watch this vacuum line up top here uh, it's in the way and it will pinch you so there you can pinch it and lose it so i lubricate the o-ring again the the o-ring on this is reusable i just like to start a bolt here and hold it and then we will go through and add the rest of these bolts to the vacuum pump and then we will tighten this down to 89 inch pounds all right so we're gonna go ahead and install our cooling fan drive and there are five bolts that attach it uh to the engine block and uh you're gonna leave one of these out it's marked on the casting here your right hand engine bolt it actually says fan bolt you want to leave it out till you get the fan back on so take four bolts of this with you so um just gonna feed this back down into the engine valley i start the longest side first and this is a dual alternator truck so it's a little bit different here so i'll feed it down and get it set where i want it and then i usually take one of my bolts and then just hang the middle of it here and go ahead and attach that one all right so i'll go through and i'll um put the rest of my bolts on here and go ahead and, and get them uh where they need to be i won't fully tighten anything down um until i do uh until i do my fan at the at the at the very end of it so that's what we're going to do now we're going to go through here and get everything lined up correctly and make sure that our wiring harness as well 
is out and free. That's another thing I forgot to mention here. This actually will go outside of the uh, legs like that, and then uh, it can be attached back to the uh, to the fan drive itself. So it's outside of that leg, and then you just want to make sure that you don't have anything else pinched in the installation here. So we'll go ahead and uh, get all of our bolts, all four of our bolts installed here, leaving our right hand bolt out. All right, after we've got our fan drive on, remember we left our bolt out. Um, I went ahead and tightened all these bolts down, left our bolt out for the uh, wiring harness holder. And then you wanna make sure before you tighten everything down here that you've got, uh, that you can still install this bolt so nothing's misaligned. All right, and tightened everything down. 18 foot pounds is the torque spec on this. At this point now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to install our, excuse me, we're gonna install this idler pulley right here. And then we will torque it down as well to 18 foot pounds. And then we are going to go ahead and then install our serpentine belt. I am going to try to find a uh, belt routing that I can put in this video for us to, uh, for you guys to be able to reference. So. Uh, I'd like to have one for a dual alternator truck and a single alternator truck, and I think I, I know what to do here. So let me get this um, belt routing to show you guys, and uh, uh, we'll come back and show you putting the fan on. All right, I'm going to start off with showing you the single alternator belt routing here. If you need to pause the video, you can. And then this is the uh, dual alternator belt routing right here. So that's what we're going to do. We have our um, we have our uh, belt or we have our idler pulley on. We're going to go ahead and get our uh, belt routed through and get it on all of the pulleys, and then go ahead and uh, be ready for our fan installation. All right, got our serpentine belt back on, and what a joy that usually is. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start our fan on now. Um, I've tried, tried to set the GoPro up here the best I can to try to stay out of your way. Remember, these are right-hand threads on the fan. And just watch your sensor as you're going or as you're going around here. Once I get the fan started, I'll usually set the sensor on the belt there just to kind of stay out of its way. You can see what we're working with here. So I'll get that run down. And a 60 foot pounds is the torque on that. We'll hit it with a rattle gun again. And uh, make sure we think we'll put our bolt back in right here and we will reconnect our wiring harness uh, back. Don't forget to put your push pin in on the holder. So I'm gonna get all that done and co come back. I'll show you what that looks like put together the best I can. I'll readjust my GoPro arm so you can see that. All right, we've got everything hooked up at our, at our fan. So we've got the electrical portion um, hooked back into the clutch. We have the last bolt put into the clutch drive right here. Then uh, the wiring harness is push pinned back onto that bracket, so we're in good shape there. Um, we're pretty much done up here at the front. I'll go ahead and uh, connect this vacuum line right here. Just go ahead and have that done so I don't forget it. And then this is for our uh, EGR, but that I'll have that little portion right there done. So we are now at a point where um, we are ready to start working on top side and getting the intake manifolds um, hooked up. You just wanna make sure that all your wiring harnesses are freed up here and they're not caught on something. And yeah, that's it. Let's put some intake manifolds on. It's time to sit our manifolds back in here. When I do this, what I do is first thing, I, sit, I just set my lower intake manifold back in there and I do the best I can to try to keep that clamp up so I don't have to go fishing after it. So I just sit it on the face of the turbo. That's all I do, just, just sit it right there on the face. And then um, I, I do it a little bit different now. On the upper intake manifold, I take the throttle valve off um, 
it's just easier for me yeah it takes me a little bit of time to put the valve back on but it's just easier for me to get this in here and not chew up the truck blah 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 uh, then you want to make sure that you check at your legs at the intake manifolds that your o-rings are there and then they're not cut and all the things so let's go sit the upper intake manifold in here watch your oil dipstick and just try to get the orientation of it as good as you can and once it kind of falls in don't let it <laughs> so that's the way i do it like i said again the throttle valve you know having to go back and get the throttle valve is going to take you a little bit of time but i tell you it's really saves you so much um just on fighting this upper intake manifold so i'm going to go ahead and get this into position here and kind of work this back and get all of my holes lined up and it looks like my clamp i'm still gonna have to fish for it but uh, that's all right can't win them all so we'll get everything in position here and uh start putting our studs or our bolts in the intake manifold intake manifolds i'll do my best to uh walk back through this with you and show you where your studs go and where the bolts go uh in relation to everything so yeah we'll uh get this set uh set up right where we want it and we'll come back and show you uh all of those bolt locations all right, I told you I'd bring you back up here and just show you the bolts on the uh, upper intake manifold at the uh, intake plenum. So on the passenger side here, you have the, the bolt with the stud. This is going to be a shorter of the two bolts with studs for these eight bolts in the upper intake plenum. This one goes right here on the passenger side and the wiring harness has a uh, has a holder that slips over there. So that's got that one. All the, the other three on the passenger side, just normal. If it's a tall side of the intake plenum, the tall bolt goes there. If it's short side, short side. On the driver side of the upper intake plenum, you have your studded bolt goes to the front here and it's what the dipstick goes to. Uh, and then the rest of them are just normal short bolts go on the short legs. Torque these crisscross pattern to 89 inch pounds. Then you have your two bolts that are the same size, 10 metric head here. Uh, these get torqued down to 18 uh, foot pounds. And then you have your next bolt right here that is closest to the, uh, that is closest to the, to the throttle valve. And then I've installed my throttle valve, of course. Uh, we've got that done. And then don't forget when you're tightening this up to tighten the clamp down on the turbo there. Uh, and that'll have that locked down. So we're gonna go through here. We're gonna tighten all of these down. I'm going to put my map cover on as well, two short bolts and reconnect the map sensor because I'm gonna be right here. So I'll get that done and get that dressed up. Then I have the nut that holds this dipstick down. And then one cross bolt back here that goes in there. I'll put that in there too. That's a short uh, metric eight headed bolt that'll go back there and hold that. So I'm gonna dress all this up before I start doing my intercooler piping. And I'll show you, come check back in and show you uh, where we're at. We'll walk through the rest of the connections. All right, as we were doing the rest of our install here, we installed our uh, EGR crossover pipe. This isn't too hard, just make sure that you keep your gaskets on here and they've got little fold down uh, flaps on them that'll keep them uh, in place. So then your EGR, your temp sensor wire, there is a holder back here on the lower intake manifold. We just want to make sure that we get the wire in there and that keeps it out of the accessory drive belt. And then we will hook it to this connector hiding out down here. Uh, and I'm not going to be able to do it one handed, but just make sure that you get to, uh, you get this hooked up and don't forget it. So I'm going to hook that up and get, we'll get both my hands freed up and then we're going to put our uh, fuel filter on. All right, so we've got our the fuel filter cradle back in. You got one bolt here, bolt here, and there's a bolt underneath of this sensor that you got to get to. You may have to loosen up the line to get back to that. But then, do you remember the uh, clip that we talked about uh, that uh, SNS uh, wants you to reuse here? We've got that, and then there's a short bolt that goes back in the cradle, uh, eight metric headed right there. We got that on. We can clamp that down and tighten these bolts down all to 89 foot pounds. And then we're going to reinstall our fuel filter. Make sure most important part of this job is you put in a new fuel filter uh, when you do this job. Anytime you're working in a fuel system component, don't care if you're changing an injector, uh, change out the pump, whatever, you always change and put in new fuel filters. All right, so to set your fuel filter in here, you start it with the uh, outlet ports 
towards the firewall and then turn it to lock in and it'll stop. So now we're going to uh, hook our, make sure that your clips are up. We're gonna hook our suction side from the tank on. clips and then we have our uh, supply side to the DCR make sure that we got our clips up push it on lock it down and then our return line we want to make sure that we just clip it on now this is for the 20 plus truck so there you are and then we've got our fuel sensor here that we're going to plug back in right there lock it down and then you got a Christmas tree push pin right here that goes in that and there you are and then we're finally going to get this uh, closed cap ventilation line out of our way push it onto the clips and it shouldn't back back off so that's got everything done on this side so we're going to start working on getting the intercooler pipes on uh, again our intercooler pipes are going to be aftermarket so uh, I'm not going to show it show you this going back on um, but you know it's it's reversive of uh, installation so we'll get our uh, hot side and our cold side line back on check in show you uh, the sensor connections and everything there oh one thing on this throttle valve I just saw this when you hook it up, you want to make sure that you get it back on and get it locked into place. All right, all right, all right. All right, let's go over finishing touches real quick. So we've got our intake uh, system on, on on our aftermarket piping, like I was talking to you about. Don't forget to hook up uh, your air temp sensor right here and then get that traced correctly. We took our coolant line, which was laying underneath of our intake, we brought it over here, hooked back to our degas bottle, routed it correctly, uh, put our vacuum line on, the little short piece, it is in, we've got it routed correctly. The map sensor, make sure when you put the intake on that you hook the map sensor in. We get a call about map codes a lot uh, when guys are doing this and they, they just forget that quite a bit. So just keep that in mind. Um, just everything else is right here and and tucked in i just go through and make sure that i didn't left anything anywhere and just clean everything up so i'm going to try to set up on the tripod here so i can get some shots of the truck starting and idling so you can get a get some sound clips of that and uh, uh we'll wrap this up all right we had some technical difficulties last night when we were finishing up this truck on on startup uh the video i lost battery on the gopro so uh adam and i are back to shoot our closing shot of this here and i just want to talk about your pre-startup procedure when you've done a dcr pump so with a dcr pump you will have done a um, new fuel filter on it as well so new fuel filter on the truck and then uh, with the vacated lines it took me five cycles of the lift pump to for the truck to start so cycling the lift pump you know without your foot on the brakes the truck doesn't turn over you just cycle the key one time so like i said i did that five times that gave me enough prime uh the truck started within three seconds i think started great ran great i actually used the truck last night hauled a load of cattle with it uh truck does phenomenal you know we've got a dcr video on a previous model truck on the 20 to 22 truck you know we saw the same thing we saw a little bit of an increase in throttle response i was starting to see a little bit of uh, of better fuel economy with the with the truck as well didn't get a lot of road miles on it but did get some road miles on it that were that counted you know with a pretty good size load under it so we're really happy with this product dcr is, is again just a wildly uh, uh wildly good selling product for us and i'm going to start the truck and let you hear it so you, that you see that there's no difference in how the truck sounds or anything like that but um i wanted to talk about some main points you know the kit is oe fit and finish it, it really, really is. When you look inside of this engine bay, and Adam will come off the stand here, you're gonna come back by. Obviously nothing, the intake of the upper and the lower intake manifolds are obviously on the truck, but there's nothing that jumps out to you that makes you think that the truck isn't, uh, isn't bone stock with that. Um, the CP4, and we made mention of it in an earlier clip of the video, you can just tell at how much uh, force it takes to rotate the CP4 versus what it takes to rotate the DCR pump that it's really just easier on the engine. Um, you know, the line kits, they did a lot of, uh, they spent a lot of time on the engineering of those for them to be 
drop in, fit and finish, all holders lined up. I didn't have to tweak anything. I didn't have to stretch anything or anything like that. It just really, really came together really, really nicely. So I'm gonna start the truck just so you guys can hear it. And uh, um, you know, notice that there's no, no difference here in the truck as far as sound goes. Starts well, runs well. Um, you know, it's it, it really is. It's a home run. Uh, this kit for you guys that are concerned about a CP4 failure, this is probably one of the probably one of the best tools that you got in your toolbox right now. One probably one of the best uh, product offerings out there for you guys. As you can say, we we left our the truck had a DPK on it before, which is your CP4 bypass. We left the return filtration on here. It doesn't do anything, but hey, you know, it's there. It polishes the, or it, uh, it filters the fuel before it goes back to the tank. It doesn't have anything to do with the DCR failure because DCR isn't gonna fail in the same uh, way that a CP4 does. You're not gonna see a DCR failure either. So all the things, DCR, this is our, our video for the later model trucks. I hope it answers a lot of your questions. Uh, Adam and I are still working through uh, a lot of the ways that we're doing videos when we're using our GoPros and stuff to make sure that we get you all the best shots. So leave us some comments down in the in the comments section and uh, let us know what you think and anything that we can do different or uh, how we can better serve you in these videos. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions about 6.7 Power Strokes, SNS Diesel, uh, SNS Diesel Motorsport, DCR pumps, just give us a call. Uh, we appreciate you watching.